Hello and welcome to Dr. Bond Science Theater. Today we're going to be talking about water chemistry. Inquiry number one. What is the difference in hydrogen ion concentration of pH 1 versus a pH of 4? A pH of 1 has 1,000 times more hydrogen ions than a pH of 4. Why? Because it's a base 10 log scale. By definition of the log function, a change in concentration of 10 leads to a pH of 1. The log of 10 is 1, the log of 100 is 2, etc. Inquiry number 2. We can map out for each pH unit how much the hydrogen ion concentration changes. So the question says, what is the difference in hydrogen ion concentration of pH 1 as compared to a pH of 7? You know, we can determine that if the pH of 7 would be, was 1, with a, then on a pH of 1, it would be a million. Inquiry number 3. What is the hydrogen ion concentration of a solution with a pH of 7.35? So in this problem, we're given the pH. The hydrogen ion concentration is equal to 10 to the negative 7.35 power. And solved, it's 2.2 times 10 to the negative 7. So that is your hydrogen ion concentration. Inquiry number 4. The pH scale is an open-ended scale, meaning that you can have a pH greater than 14 or even less than 0, but they're not really going to apply in aqueous solutions. And since, you know, the body, the biochemistry is based upon aqueous solutions, that's why we don't discuss it below 0 or above a 14. If you have a pH of 1 times 10 to the 1 molar solution of hydrochloric acid, the pH is going to be a negative 1, so just know that it can exist. PH calculations. Number five. Okay, so what is the pOH of a solution with a hydrogen ion concentration of 1 times 10 to the negative 6? First thing you need to do is figure out the pH of the solution. pH equals the negative log of the hydrogen ion concentration, which is the negative log of 1 times 10 to the negative 6, and the pH is 6. Now let's calculate the pOH. So the pOH is 14 minus the pH. POH equals 14 minus 6 equals 8. So the POH equals 8. I love buffer calculations. Yay, yay, yay. Inquiry number 6. Woo, woo, woo. Find the pH of a mixture of a weak acid and a strong base. So you have 30 mils of 0.1 molarity acetic acid and 20 mils of 0.1 molarity sodium hydroxide. Okay, the first step right out the equation. You have acetic acid plus hydroxide yields acetate plus water. You have the concentration, so you're going to find the moles of each. 0.03 liters times 0.1 moles per liter equals 0 0.003 moles. Of the OH, you have 0.02 liters times 0.1 moles per liter, and that equals 0 0.002 moles. You know 0 0.002 moles is going to be consumed by the acetic acid. Therefore, you're going to have 0 0.001 moles acetic acid left in the solution. There is 0 0.001 one moles of acetic acid left after it has reacted with sodium hydroxide. And divide by the new volume of 0.05 liters that we got from adding the initial 30 mils of acetic acid and 20 mils of sodium hydroxide. We will end up with a new molar concentration of 0.02. Next step is to find the concentration of a weak base. You know that the amount of moles is going to equal however much strong base you put in, so it's 0 0.02 moles, divided by the new volume in the solution, which is 0 0.05 liters, and that is going to equal 0 0.04 moles per liter, and that is the new concentration of the conjugate base, or the acetate. So now you have a buffer solution where you have the weak acid and the conjugate base. So we establish the buffer. We have the acetic acid plus water yields acetate plus the hydronium. Or There's a 0.02 molarity of acetic acid and there's a 0.04 moles per liter of the conjugate base. We're going to plug these into the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. 
pH equals pKa plus the log of the weak base over the weak acid. Plug in the numbers. So you have pH equals the pKa of acetic acid. You look on the chart and it's 4.76 plus the log of 0.04 divided by 0.02. That is equal to the log of 2, which is equal to 0.3. 3.0 plus the 4.76 and your new pH is 5.06. It makes sense because the base increased and of course that's going to increase the pH a little above the pKa. <laughs> So you're going to calculate the pH change in a buffered solution with this problem. So you have 0.02 moles of sodium hydroxide dissolved in 300 mils of a buffer solution of acetic acid and acetate. What is the final pH of the solution? Before we figure out the pH of the final solution, we need to calculate the pH of the acetate and acetic acid buffer solution. I'm going to use the henderson hasselbalch equation because this is acetic acid and acetate, and so this is a weak acid and base pair. There's, you know, substantial amount of it in the solution, so it will be acting as a buffer, and we're adding a strong base to it, so that's why we can use the henderson and Hasselbeck equation to determine the pH of the solution. So we want to know what the initial pH is. Using the equation is pH equals the pKa, which you get from a chart because that is a known value, plus the log of the acetate over the acetic acid. So then I plug in the values. pH is equal to 4.76 plus the log of 0 0.04 over 0 0.08. I'm going to put the base over the acid and then solve. Okay, before I add any of this strong base, I have a pH of 4.46. Okay, now we're going to react the strong base, and what it will react with in this solution is the weak acid, the acetic acid, and we're going to assume that it's going to dissociate to completion. For the neutralization step, I have acetic acid plus sodium hydroxide, or you can just write hydroxide, but because the sodium doesn't really matter, but whatever, yields sodium acetate plus water. Again, we're going to assume that all of the hydroxides are going to react because this is a strong base. So the next step is we need to figure out how many moles are in solution of the acetic acid and the acetate before we actually add the sodium hydroxide. For the acetic acid, I'm going to take the 0.08 molar times the 0.3 liters and I get 0.024 moles in the solution. Then the moles of acetate, we have 0 0.04 molar times 0 0.3 liters, and that is going to equal 0 0.012 moles. So in this 300 mils or 0.3 mils, we have 0 0.02 moles of acetic acid and 0 0.012 moles of acetate. So I'm going to go back to my equation and write what I started with um, as far as moles. And then I'm going to, underneath that, write the change of what reacts the strong base with the acetic acid. And then I add to the um, acetate. Then at the end, I have 0 0.004 moles of acetic acid. No moles of sodium hydroxide because it's all reacted. And then of the acetate, I have 0.032 moles. Now I'm going to get the molarity of the acetic acid and the acetate so I can stick it into the henderson hasselbalch equation and get the new pH. And all I'm going to do is divide by the 0.3 liters for both of them. So for the acetic acid, I get 0.013 molar. For the acetate, I get 0.107 molar. And then stick it into the henderson hasselbalch equation. pH equals 4.76 plus the log of 0.107 divided by 0.013 and solve. Now our pH is 5.66. And as we see with this problem, because our buffering capacity is one unit above and below the pKa, this is at the upper range of our buffering capacity. If we added much more strong acid, we would see that the buffering ability would be pretty much lost. Calculate the relative amounts of acetic acid and acetate ion present when one mole of acetic acid is titrated with sodium hydroxide. 
Then you're going to use the Henderson Hasselbalch equation to calculate the value of the pH at this point. First, we're going to do some stoichiometry. There is a one-to-one -one ratio of moles of acid reacted to the moles of base added. It's a strong base. The difference between the original number of moles of acid and the number reacted is going to be the number of moles of acid remaining. So when 0.1 mole of NaOH is added, these are the values to be used in the numerator and the denominator. 0.1 mole of acetic acid of the Henderson Hasselbalch equation reacts with it to form 0.1 mole of acetate ion. Then you're left with 0.9 moles of acetic acid. The composition is 90% acetic acid and 10% acetate ion. So let's look at the equation. pH equals pKa plus the log of 0.1 of the base over 0.9 of the acid. pH equals 4.76 plus the log of 0.1 over 0.9. pH is equal to 4.76 minus 0.95 and the pH is equal to 3.8. <laughs> Calculate the pH value obtained with 1 milliliter of 0.1 molar HCl is added to 99 milliliters of pure water. Also calculate the pH observed when 1 mil of 0.1 molar NaOH is added to 99 mils of pure water. Because HCl is a strong acid, we will assume that 0.1 molar HCl dissociates completely to give 0.1 mol hydronium. If we have 1 mil of the acid, we calculate the amount of hydronium. 1 mil is equal to 1 times 10 to the third liter. 1 times 10 to the third liter times 0.1 moles per liter equals 1 times 10 to the negative 4 moles of hydronium. Therefore, 1 times 10 to the negative 4 moles of, of hydronium are diluted to a final volume of 100 mils because 1 mil was added to the 99 mils. The final the concentration of hydronium is calculated as follows. 1 times 10 to the negative 4 moles of hydronium divided by 0.1 liter equals 1 times 10 to the third moles per liter. The pH is then calculated. pH is equal to the negative log of the hydrogen ion concentration and that is equal to negative log of 1 times 10 to the negative 3 and therefore pH is 3. For the added base, the calculations are done similar to generate the concentration of the hydroxide. The hydroxide ion concentration equals 1 times 10 to the negative 3 moles because we use the same concentration and the same volume of base. The hydronium is then calculated using the concentration of hydroxide and the water equation, remember Kw. So you have the concentration of hydroxide times the concentration of the hydronium is equal to 1 times 10 to the negative 14. The concentration of hydrogen is equal to 1 times 10 to the negative 14 divided by the hydroxide ion concentration. 1 times 10 to the negative 14 divided by 1 times 10 to the negative 3. And that's equal to a pH of 11. What is the ratio of acetate to acetic acid? in an acetate buffer with a pH of 5. Use the henderson hasselbalch equation. pH equals pKa plus the log of the acetate over the acetic acid. Then you just plug in the numbers 5 for the pH equals 4.76 for the pKa plus the log of the acetate over the acetic acid. Then using algebra, you're going to subtract the 4.76 from both sides and you get 0.24 equals the log of the acetate over the acetic acid. Then you simply take the in inverse log of 0.24 and you end up with 1.7 over 1. <laughs> this is Brenda the Not So Good Witch signing off for today. See you next time on Dr. Bond Science Theater.